Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to install Windows 11 ARM for free for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So currently it is possible to run Windows 11 ARM for free using VMware Fusion. And this is because this software is currently in a tech preview. And what they're saying is that Fusion for Apple Silicon is effectively free for all users for the time being. So this basically means that at some point in the future, VMware Fusion for M1 Macs will become a paid product. And furthermore, VMware Fusion doesn't officially support Windows 11 ARM and so requires some workarounds in order to get it to work. Furthermore, there is the option of running Windows 11 ARM through Parallels. You can run this through a 14 day free trial. However, after that period, it does become a paid product. Parallels is by far the best virtual machine software on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. It's good enough to be able to run many games, which won't be an option on VMware Fusion or the option that I'm going to show you today. However, if you just want to get some simple Windows applications working for your M1 Mac and you don't want to make payments and you're happy accepting relatively low performance, then I'm going to show you the UTM method today. So UTM is a front end for QEMU, which is an open source free virtual machine software. And this is built specifically for Mac. So I've seen various tutorials on how to get this running, including the official UTM guidelines. However, what I found with this set of instructions is that there is substantial instability, especially when using UTM version 2.4.1, so that you can't complete the installation correctly. How the method I'm gonna show you today is gonna to be much more reliable and is relatively simple to do without many hacks involved. And the main benefit of using UTM is that this is a completely free open source software, which will never be a paid for product. And you can do all of your Windows testing without worrying about payment. So the first thing that we need to do is to download UTM. So I'm gonna leave a link to this GitHub page in the description. We are not going to use the UTM website because we want to use UTM 3.0. And, and the version from the website at the time of recording is 2.4.1, which runs Windows 11 ARM a bit unreliably. Here we're gonna be using the latest beta version of UTM. And what we need to do is to navigate to the releases section here. And here we're going to be using version 3.0.0 beta. So what I want to do is to scroll down and then open up the assets section here. Then we're going to download the utm.dmg. Here we we'll press save. So once that file is in our downloads folder, we're going to double click on utm.dmg and then basically I'm going to drag it into my applications folder and then let go. So once we're in applications, we're going to double click on utm and press open. So what we'll do here is press create a new virtual machine. And we have a new wizard here, which is new to version 3.0.0. Here we're going to select virtualize. And now we're going to select the Windows operating system. And now we have the option here to import a VHDX file. So if I click this blue link here, it's going to take us to the Windows 11 ARM Insider Preview link. So once we get to this page, we need to sign up for the Windows Insider Preview, which is completely free for any Microsoft account. So what you need to do is to log into your Microsoft account and then enroll to become a member of the Windows Insider program. So you're gonna click learn more, and then we're gonna scroll down here and then register. Here we're gonna accept the terms of the agreement and register now. And now we're gonna press the flight now button. And now we have enrolled into that program. And then what we're gonna do is to go back to the page. So I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description if you want to return here after you've signed up for the Microsoft Insider program. And now this page looks different. We now have a button which allows us to download the Windows 11 ARM Insider Preview build. So I'm gonna click this now and then we're gonna download the VHDX file and press OK. And now that file is downloading. So once this VHDX file has completed downloading, we have a couple of options. So the simple way to do this is just to go ahead and make sure that this is ticked and then click browse. And then when we go to our downloads folder, we can just go ahead and select the Windows 11 ARM VHDX file that we just downloaded. However, there have been some reports on the UTM user base that using the VHDX can cause corruption within the virtual machine. And so it's often more reliable to convert this to a QCAL2. However, if you just want to do some simple testing, you just press next and then continue the installation process. And you can just skip ahead to the chapter where I set up Windows 11 ARM. However, today I'm going to show you how to convert this to a QCAL2 file. So the conversion process is actually very simple. So all we need to do is to go to the brew.sh website and then install Homebrew. So I'm going to go to this website and then we need to click this clipboard button and that will copy this command into the clipboard. And then we're going to go to the top right hand side of the screen and then type in the word terminal. Then we're going to select terminal from here. So what I'm going to do now is to hold down the control key and then click on this white space and press paste. Now I'm going to press return and this is going to download Homebrew, which is a prerequisite for the conversion tool we're gonna to use. Here I'm gonna type in my password. So when you type in a word here, it's going to appear invisible, but it's all there. If we press return, then it'll accept our password. Here it's telling us it's gonna install Homebrew and it's also gonna install something called command line tools. If you haven't installed this before, this will just install altogether as a package. So here I'm gonna press return and basically just wait for this to fully download. If this is the first time that you've installed command line tools, then this might take a little bit of time. So just be patient. So once command line tools have installed, it will start installing Homebrew. 
So once Homebrew has finished installing, we have a last step here, which is very important. We need to copy and paste these two lines so that the path has been set. So here we're going to hold down the control and copy these two lines here. Then I'm going to control and paste here and then press return and this will set the path. So here you're gonna type in the word brew and return, and then this is gonna show the command list. And so now we know that brew has installed correctly. So the next thing that we need to do is to go ahead and install QEMU. So here we're gonna type in the command brew install QEMU and then press return. So once QEMU has been installed, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. On the left, I've got my Windows 11 ARM Insider Preview, which is a VHDX file. And I want to convert this to a QKL2 for increased reliability. And on the right, I've got my terminal window. So the command we're going to use today is something I'm going to leave in the description. It's QEMU-IMG space convert space dash P space dash capital O space QKL2. And what I want to do is to leave a space there. And then what we're going to do is get our VHDX file and then drag it into the terminal window. And that gives the full path. And then what we're going to do is make sure we have a space here. And then we're going to do the same process again. We're going to drag this in and then drag the VHDX file there. And the crucial thing here is that we're going to click on the terminal window and then press backspace. And then we're going to delete the .VHDX. We're going to convert it to a .QCOW2. So I'm not sure if you can see that line correctly, but basically we're changing this line to QCAL2. Basically this command is saying convert the VHDX into a QCAL2. So basically I'm gonna press return. And then you can see here that within our downloads folder, it's automatically creating this QCAL2 right next to our VHDX file. So now that's done, we can go ahead and close the terminal window and we'll go back to our UTM wizard. So like I said before, we could continue with the VHDX. However, today we're gonna to be continuing with the QCAL2. So I'm gonna press browse here. I'm gonna select my QCAL2 file, which I just generated and press open. And now I'm gonna press next. So here we should be allocating half of the memory of the computer. So I'm using a 32 gigabyte M1 Max. So we should be using half of that, which is 16 gigabytes. We should also be using half of our CPU cores. So I have 10 CPU cores on my computer. If you're using an M1 chip or M1 Pro with only eight cores, then you should be selecting four CPU cores. Here I'm gonna press next. So here we have the option of setting a shared directory. I'm gonna skip this for now. Here I'm gonna press next. And so this is a summary of all the settings that we're using. Here I'm gonna continue anyway, I'm gonna press save. And if I want to edit any settings, I can always control click on here and press edit and then I can change any of these settings from here. Notably with UTM 3.0.0 the emulated graphics card is a non-GPU accelerated one. This is because this has some instability. Also we're using the latest version of QEMU which is 6.2 and also note that the CPU has been set to default. This has improved compatibility and this should all be set up correctly. So you shouldn't need to touch any of these settings but you can tweak them if you want. So to boot into Windows 11 ARM we just press the play button here and it's going to start up UTM. So here we're just going to let UTM load. You'll see this big logo here and it's just loading up the Windows 11 ARM installation process. So you find that the virtual machine will restart in order to load up the installer. So now the installer has loaded up, we're going to continue to the next step. So just be aware that if you can't click on some elements, you can press the option and control keys and this will bound the mouse within the virtual machine window. It'll make it easy to click on things. So here we're just going to set up the country, the keyboard layout, we don't have to set up internet at this stage. We're just going to continue with limited setup, accept the licensing agreement. So just enter your name here and press next. Here I'm just going to turn off all the tracking settings. So now the setup process has completed and we can now see the Windows 11 ARM desktop within the Mac operating system. So the next thing we're going to do is to download the Spice Guest tools and QEMU drivers. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. This is from the UTM website and this comes in the form of an ISO. So we're going to click the download button here and download this ISO. So if I open up Explorer here, you'll see everything that's attached to this computer. So what I'm going to do is to add the Spiceworks guest tools as a DVD ISO and mount it here. So I'm going to press the browse button and we're going to navigate to our Spice guest tools here. Press the open button and this will be mounted as a CD within the virtual machine. So you're going to select the D drive in Explorer. And then here we have the application folder, which we're going to double click on now. Here you're going to press yes, click next. I agree. And then just let the drivers install. Now that's complete. We're going to press finish. And then we're going to reboot the virtual machine. So just press start menu, power, and then restart. So we're going to log back in. And now when we right click on the desktop, I'm going to go to display settings. So what we should do is make sure that the monitor only shows on the first display. Press keep changes. 
If you have trouble pressing any buttons, just use the keyboard keys to do it. So after these resolution settings have been changed, you might find that the mouse alignment is now incorrect. What you can do is press the function key and then the option key as well, and then F4, and then that will close that particular window. And then if we do that again, hold the function key, the option key and F4, then this will bring us to this shutdown menu. So we can use the keyboard down arrow to select restart and then press return. And this will restart the virtual machine. So now you can see that we're connected to the internet correctly and we're running at a slightly higher resolution. So what you can do is go ahead and set the display resolution to something a little bit higher. I'm gonna set mine to 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of this recording. And I'm gonna press option and control to take my mouse out so that I can full screen this correctly. And I'm gonna press option and control so I can use this virtual machine properly. Once you change resolution and you can't click on the screen, all you have to do is restart the computer again. We just press the function, option and F4 key, and then we're gonna press down and then restart again. So now I'm logging in again. And now I've got a full Windows 11 ARM desktop at 1920 by 1080, and this is all working correctly. So if you want to enable sharing, which we skipped over earlier in the wizard, what you can do is just go ahead and edit the virtual machine. And then we're going to do the sharing section here. And then we're going to enable directory sharing, and press save. And now in the virtual machine settings, we can set a share directory. Then I can select my downloads folder here, for example. And then when I load up my virtual machine again, and now when I restart, I can access the shared drive through this mounted network drive, which is drive Z. And now this is linked to my downloads folder. We have the QKR2 file that we're running from and also the VHDX that we downloaded earlier. So we can go ahead and copy and paste files back and forth through the host operating system, as well as the Windows 11 ARM guest. So because this is a non-hardware accelerated GPU, the kind of gaming opportunities on here are limited. However, you can go ahead and install Steam. So this virtual machine won't perform nearly as well as Parallels does. So if you're really interested in gaming, I do recommend using Parallels instead. I've got plenty of tutorials on my YouTube channel about how to get Windows 11 ARM gaming working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So you're gonna launch Fallout 2. So I can see the game does work. I'm just gonna start a new game to see how it performs in game. So this is not too bad considering that we're running a virtual machine. We're actually emulating the x86 code to run on Windows 11 ARM. And this is being virtualized in a free virtual machine software. So I can handle a little bit of cursor bug there. I'm sure I could fix that just by pressing Control and Option to move the cursor out of the way. And then pressing Control Option again, which has put it in the top left corner instead. But that's perfectly fine, I think. So you're going to quit the game and go back into our virtual machine. So this is not running too badly, especially as we're running this on a free open source virtual machine software. Hopefully I've demonstrated that it is possible to run a free Windows 11 ARM virtual machine, and then it can be good enough to get some things working, some light games, some light applications, and that we can mimic some of the basic functionality of a more expensive virtual machine software like Parallels. If you are interested in some high performance gaming, for example, Final Fantasy VII Remake, this can run on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac using something like Parallels, which won't be possible on UTM, then please check out the link in the description. It does cost some money, but the performance increase and also the support that you get while makes up for the cost. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.